given uh, extensive introduction to dapagliflozone and now we see how it uh, is useful in the heart failure patients now as you know the diabetes is a metabolic disease but with multiple vascular complications and uh, we have got uh, it may involve the coronary artery disease present with heart failure peripheral artery disease stroke retinopathy you know all these things are uh, fundamental and uh, basically known to everybody uh, i have been noticing in my own op and practice uh, nearly 40 to 50% of my patients have diabetes whether it is coronary artery disease or heart failure or present with any other uh, cardiac issues in general 40% have coronary artery disease or 40 to 50% also now as you know it confers diabetes confers increased risk for coronary artery disease mi and heart failure nearly 40 to 45% of the diabetic patients have the uh, develop heart failure over a period of time and conversely nearly 20% of the patients with heart failure will have diabetes and it increases the higher risk of hospitalization mortality whether it is ischemic or non ischemic and the morbidity and mortality increase if the person also develops diabetic nephropathy now we know but uh, over a period of years we know uh, that diabetes control is important mostly important in the preventing at the microvascular complications but it also reduces the macrovascular complications but not when treated alone as stenote study has shown it is not just the hyperglycemia that we have to treat but we also have to treat associated lipid disorders hypertension etc but the somehow till now the diabetic anti diabetic agents have are not very you know uh, very adept in preventing all the cardiovascular complications especially glitazone have actually increased the heart failure risk and from the advance and accord study we know that there is problem with the sulfonyl ureas also as we see if the oral hypoglycemic agents if they cause hypoglycemia the cardiovascular mortality increases more severe the hypoglycemia more severe the mortality so we require new class of medications which do not prevent uh, which do not cause hyper heart failure and also do not cause severe uh, hypoglycemia in these patients so in this class the come the sglt2 inhibitors now bipin has dealt with extensively extensively the, the the mechanism of action includes the diuretic hypothesis tripti substrate and nhi hypothesis which he has discussed the diuretic hypothesis basically natriuresis and uh, diuresis it causes and substrate changes from glucose to beta hydroxybutyrate and glucon increase will be there and sodium hydrogen exchange hypothesis helps us in understanding how the cardiovascular benefits accrue in this patient with these drugs and on the right side you see the the renal effects apart from the it, it they cause the these sglt2 inhibitors cause the afferent arterial or constriction thereby decreasing the glomerular hypertension that dr ratanja will be elaborating in uh, detail and diuretics and natriuresis and glycosuria and decrease proteinuria they all cause decrease in the volume and also decrease in the blood pressure and weight reduction will be there and all this reduce the afterload afterload uh, to go back to physiology is the resistance against which the heart has to contract after the onset of contraction heart has to pump after the onset of contraction the preload is also decreased because of the good diuresis and lv wall stress increase all these favorably affect the hemodynamics and heart which are beneficial in the heart failure and not only that myocardial energetics in the myocardial cardiomyocyte improve as i mentioned a better molecule will be there for as a fuel that is beta hydroxybutyrate and because of the sodium hydrogen exchange inhibition the intracellular calcium decreases that will also improve the cardiac the myocyte action and the as you can see the the sick uh, heart of the diabetic patient remodels with the sgl2 inhibitors and becomes a healthy heart this occurs by decreasing the left ventricular hypertrophy by favorable changes in the cytokines and inflammatory milieu extra extra cellular matrix is remodeling occurs and impaired cardiac metabolism is corrected and cardiomyocyte apoptosis is correct all these lead to the, i'll be showing later the visible changes in the heart structure and function and as i mentioned 
sodium hydrogen exchange uh, is uh, impaired in these uh, patients with heart failure, which leads to increased sodium and calcium. With the inhibition of this sodium hydrogen exchange mechanism, the sodium and calcium decrease in the cytosol, and that improves the cardiac efficiency. And it is said that SGLT2 inhibitors, unlike loop, loop diuretics, they decrease the interstitial edema while preserving the intravascular compartment. Whereas loop diuretics predominantly affect the intravascular volume, vasoconstriction occurs, the more of intravascular volume depletion occurs, whereas with SGLT2 inhibitors, it is the interstitial edema that is uh, decreased. So this has a beneficial effect because intravascular volume decreases, the renin angiotensin system becomes aggravated, which is not good for the heart failure. Now, following the glitazone controversy, FDA mandated that all new diabetic agents should have cardiovascular outcome. With this in mind, the SGLT2 inhibitors were initially studied to see if they are particularly harmful in the cardiovascular arena. When, when the first study was done, the declared TIMI 58, which is published in 2019, January, this studied in 17,160 patients over four and a half years and both primary and secondary prevention with the atherosclerotic vascular disease. And the basic primary endpoint was to see if the major adverse cardio, cardiovascular events, that is death, stroke, and MI, are decreased in these patients or not. So what did this study show? This has shown that the primary endpoint, the MACE, the, 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 there is a favorable effect, but not statistically significant. However, the the major primary efficacy endpoint, the cardiovascular death for heart failure and hospitalization for heart failure is significantly decreased compared to the placebo with a p-value of 0 0.005 for superiority. They're not just equal, they're superior with a odds ratio of 0.83. Similarly, renal composite endpoint is also highly statistically significant beneficial in these patients and death from any cause, though it is numerically better, it's not statistically significant. So it has, it has been shown very clearly that the, the dapagliflazone has uh, favorable effects in decreasing the heart failure related mortality and hospitalization. With this purpose, DAPA heart failure uh, study was undertaken. Uh, this was taken in patients with uh, heart failure, both with and without diabetes. And dapagliflazone 10 milligrams daily was added to the standard therapy for the heart failure, especially in patients with uh, reduced rejection fraction. The study included uh, NOHA class 2 to 4 patients, LVF should be less than 40%, that is heart failure is reduced rejection fraction, and NT pro BNP more than 600. If the patient has recent hospitalization, it is 400. If the patient has atrial fibrillation, it is 900 the picograms per ml. They excluded patients with GFR less than 30, type 1 diabetes, and the systolic blood pressure is low. After a running period, patients are randomized to placebo or dapagliflazone, and they were followed up to 844 events occurred. And what is the patient characteristics? The, the, the mean age is about 67 years, and class two, three fair patients are represented here, though the class four is slightly less. Mean EF is 30%, and NT pro BNP is obviously raised, and ischemic, non-ischemic etiology is equally represented. GFR, predominantly half of them have GFR uh, less than 60 ml, and uh, prior heart failure hospitalization seen about 50% of these patients. And coming to the heart failure management, they, well, one can say they are excellently managed. The ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or ARNI was there almost in 93 or 94% of the patients. And beta blockers were seen in 96, 97%. Mineral cortical receptor antagonists about 70%. And a good number of them received ICDs or CRTs. So most of them have. Uh, standard care of uh, standard care is uh, ex excellent. And what is the primary outcome? The primary composite outcome is CV death, heart failure, hospitalization, or urgent heart failure visit. This endpoint you should know because many times for various reasons the patients may not be admitted, either because of the social, economic, or cultural factors, or patient may not like to get admitted. So even a visit to the emergency room for heart failure is considered as uh, urgent visit is considered as an endpoint. So this has shown a highly significant decrease with dapagliflazone, the primary endpoint, both in diabetic patients and non-diabetic patients, dapagliflazone has significantly reduced the primary endpoint. And also CV death and hospitalization, both are decreased. 
and even primary endpoint uh, decrease and all cause death also statistically significant decrease is there decrease is there in these patients it is not only the quantity of life that is improved but even the quality of life as mentioned by the kansas city uh, art failure score has uh, significantly and statistically improvement is there when the patients with heart failure to reduce rejection fraction were given uh, uh, the dapagliflozin and the benefit is seen not only in patients with diabetes whether it is there or not it is favorably dapagliflozin is better you see all the in this chart all the the the, the result is on to the left side or that means which is better and irrespective of the uh, the baseline uh, uh, hba1c the benefit is seen in these patients and what about the safety endpoint the adverse events you see there is no significant difference in any of the adverse events whether it is volume depletion renal uh, adverse events fractures amputation etc none of them is significantly different uh, in these patients except here the serious adverse events are obviously more in placebo because of the increased mortality and hospitalization in these patients so in summary when added to the standard therapy dapagliflozin reduced the the mortality due to heart failure and uh, worsening of the events is less and relative and absolute risk reduction in death and hospitalization was substantial clinically important and consistent and dapagliflozin was well tolerated with hardly any serious adverse event and rate of treatment discontinuation was very low in these patients and dapagliflozin uh, is a, gives a new approach in the management of these patients this is not actually pertaining to the dapagliflozin but i i believe this is a common feature with all sgl2 inhibitors in a clinical trial randomized clinical trial involving 84 patients at the end of 6 months the end diastolic volume end systolic volume lv mass and rejection fraction all favorably and significantly improved compared to the the placebo and similarly the exercise parameters also better improved in these patients this is also not related to the dapagliflozin but it is considered as a uh, group uh, characteristic the the class effect and this particular entity heart fail with preserved ejection fraction till now we don't have a very good molecule to decrease the morbidity and mortality and in this particular trial which was done later where the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is a subset of nearly 760 patients there is a significant reduction in the adverse uh, i mean the hospitalization mortality in these patients and we know the relationship between heart and kidney are like husband and wife i, I often tell my patients if the patient has heart and renal disease the risk increases twofold and the treatment choices decrease by half and we know as the gfr decreases the mortality increases the hazard ratio of the mortality increases as the gfr decreases and the these drugs uh, scl2 inhibitors dapagliflozin uh, dr atanja will be showing us have very favorable effect in the uh, renal uh, uh, functions and gfr decrease is decreased that that indirectly benefits the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality compared to other oral anti diabetic agents like sulfonylureas and uh, dpp4 inhibitors there is a significant decrease in the all cause death heart failure hospitalization and uh, all cause death due to heart failure heart, i mean death due to heart failure uh, all are significantly decreased compared to the comparators and in that, in finally if you can say compared to other oral agents mi is decreased by 19% relative risk reduction all cause death about 49% risk reduction heart failure hospitalization about 36% reduction stroke reduction is 32% this is from a meta analysis in which 74% of the patients were receiving the dapagliflozin so one can confidently say that dapagliflozin uh, very effectively decreases the all morbidity and mortality due to diabetes and in the expert consensus statement it is shown that if the person has it is suggested that the person is is more than 18 years with type 2 diabetes and he has risk factors for atherosclerotic uh, cardiovascular disease heart failure or diabetic kidney disease one has to have the optimal lifestyle modification including blood pressure control lipids and glucose uh, uh, the, the dietary aspects and antiplatelets and recommend starting sgl2 inhibitors or glp1 receptor antagonists uh, proven cv benefits depending on the patient specific factors and one can select either sgl2 inhibitors or glp agonists and they can uh, they again manage these patients based on the further uh, uh, response and how do we start 
at, at the initiation, patients with type 2 diabetes with, uh, are at high risk of CV disease, already on metformin. If they are below the individual target, switch to non-metformin oral therapies. Uh, or if they are on other oral therapies like uh, sulfonylurea, switch to SGLT2 inhibitors. If they are above the target HbA1c, consider SGLT2 inhibitors. Now, how do you select the drug? One can select the CANA, DAPA, or EMPA. And the starting dose for CANA is 100, DAPA is 5, EMPA 10. And one can add to metformin. Consider to limit the non adherence and pill burden. Now, pre initiation safety measures make sure that the patient's GFR is uh, good. And CANA and EMPA can be given if it is slightly less. Uh, but the, for most of the patients, we have to see whether the GFR is calibrated. Sorry. Now, you have to anticipate uh, certain issues like uh, you have to teach the patients about the genito urinary, dental, and perineal hygiene has to be advised. Orthostatic hypertension has to be checked and regular foot examination to prevent any peripheral vascular disease related uh, ischemic infective events and look for symptoms of decay and avoid excess alcohol and multi system care is uh, required. Though the, it is mentioned that heart failure is one of the drugs. My personal experience is one should be very careful. Don't start them with high dose diuretics. Go slow. Suddenly you give, expose the patient to high dose diuretics and SG2, SGLT2 inhibitors. The dehydration, hypovolemia, hypotension, electrolyte imbalance are possible. So one has to go a little slow. And also, but I, this is my personal opinion, maybe Dr. Bipin can uh, clarify uh, especially elderly women with the history of urinary tract infections or they have got some pre-existing pre genitourinary abnormalities, you know, cystocele or vaginocele, things like that, prolapse. Uh, one has to be a little careful uh, in uh, advising these drugs. Otherwise, there can be serious uh, fungal infections of genitourinary tract. In conclusion, dapagliflozin helps in patients with manifest heart failure or those at risk of heart failure. This is from the studies. In the declared uh, study, declared heart TEMI study, the, the, most of them did not have any heart failure. They were at risk for heart failure. Patients with heart failure in both with and without diabetes, this is shown in the DAPA HF study. Patient with the heart failure with reduced rejection fraction or preserved rejection fraction. And though the, glycosuric, uh, the glycemic effect may not be good or renal effect may not be seen, for cardiovascular prevention, the heart failure reduction, it seems that you can go up to GFR up to 25 ml. Probably Dr. Ratanja can clarify on this. Probably future studies will show this particular aspect. And now coming to the last slide, the five pillars of pillars of, pillars of heart failure with reduced resistance fraction therapy. ACE inhibitors, ARB or ARNI, they are not actually separate. Either we give ACE inhibitors, RB, ARB or ARNI. This is one of the important components to reduce the morbidity mortality. Beta blockers, of course, one of the pillars. MRA mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. Now, SGLT2 inhibitors have taken place. These five drugs should be considered in any of the patients with heart failure. Finally, one can say SGLT2 inhibitors look more like heart failure therapy than with diabetic agents. Probably one can say they're a heart failure medication with hypoglycemic effects. Thank you very much.